Good morning, afternoon, and evening for everyone. Today's webinar is about interactions in rainforest composites as obtained through inverse gas chromatography. And here's the structure of my presentation. So first, I will just talk about the rainforest composites and some little inside of composite industry, uh, some important parameters of composites and introduction of IDC. And at the end, which is basically the major part of my presentation, I will present some case studies. Oops, sorry. Reinforced composites contain reinforcement material, which gives the necessary stiffness and strength to the composite. They are multi-component systems and their mechanical properties can be correlated with the adhesion between surfaces. Composites can be categorized based on the matrix material or the number of reinforcement materials in it. And in this case, you can see a categorization based on the reinforcement material. There's also other categorization out there. But mainly composites can be reinforced with a particle or a fiber, or there can be a structural reinforcement. Composite market has an increasing trend in the last decades. And the major drivers for growth in this market are increasing demand for late lightweight materials in the aerospace and defense and automotive industries. And based on the statistic, Uh, automotive industry will show significant increase in lightweight uh, material usage uh, till 2030. It's estimated also that the overall lightweight market in automotive will increase from 70 to 300 billion euro, reflecting an annual growth rate of 8% till 2030. Lightweighting is an important end use energy efficiency strategy in transportation. Carbon fiber and other lightweight materials will develop across industries and especially in automotive industry. This increasing trend on base materials will result of prescience of new suppliers and increasing demand on product quality, and also a new trend of recycling carbon fiber. The recycled carbon fiber quality and is not uh, the same as the virgin uh, carbon fiber. And it has a lack of sizing and some potential residues of chair and resin may left on the fiber surface. Residues will tend to lead poor fiber and matrix adhesion. And for all these reasons, and for some others as well, the importance of surface characterization and more detailed information about the physical and chemical properties of the materials will come into view. The good adhesion between the matrix and the filler is crucial in rainforest composites. The quality and performance of nanocomposites depend strongly on the interactions of the components and their interface. Surface treatments and modifications of fibers or fillers perform to enhance this adhesion. Surface energetics of the individual components can be related to the adhesion. Performing contact angle studies to measure surface energy on fibers, powders, or on paper, is difficult because of the irregular surface, small substrate size for fibers, and wicking phenomena. IGC inverse gas chromatography doesn't suffer from these, those limitations. IGC was developed in the 60s, and it's mainly used to measure surface energetics of solid materials. Nevertheless, it's suitable to determine other physical chemical properties of solid materials. 
especially suited to fibrous and powdery substrates. IGC SCA is the first and the only commercial IGC system is produced by SMS. On this slide, you can see the schematic of the IGC SCA system. The carrier gas uh, is helium or nitrogen. The oven has a special design uh, to determine thermodynamic properties. And there's two column positions that you can see also on the picture on the left side. And the standard oven has a 20 to 150 degree C operating range. And it has an automated gas phase injection system, which provides a precise injection of a wide range of injectable probes. And also, it has a very user friendly control and analysis software. Our IGC SCA system is equipped with FID which is the most sensitive detector for organic vapors, but it's not sensitive for water. Therefore, we can provide the system with the background humidity controller, which can generate humid carrier gas flow through the system, through the column, and the influence of the relative humidity on the different physical chemical properties can be measured with igc -SCA. It's quite important benefit of our instrument because there's humidity everywhere during production, during storage, and during the application of the solid material. IGC SCA column is different compared with the classic GC column. Our sample column are straight silanized glass tubes with different inner diameters. So you can select the most suitable diameter or the sample and the columns are not reusable but IGC measurements is a non-destructive analysis so you can use a packed column for different type of analysis for example in case of fibers we use the four milli diameter column inner diameter column and we don't chop the fiber we use a quite long uh, piece of the fiber create a hard and then pull or push into the in the column. If you are interested in the column packing, you can visit our uh, YouTube uh, channel and you can see column packing uh, procedures in case of powders and fibers. This slide shows the difference in principle between analytical GC and IGC. While GC is used to get quality and quantity information about the injected compounds, IGC is used to get physical chemical information about the solid material, which is packed into the column. The sample of interest is packed into the column and single pure organic probes injected onto the column. The retention time of the different organic probes is measured which indicates the interaction strength between the surface and the probe. And also it can be used to determine different physical chemical properties of the solid material, which is in the column. For example, to measure the dispersive surface energy, series of normal alkanes injected one by one through the column. From the retention parameters, the dispersive surface energy can be calculated using the Schultz or the Doris and Gray method. This gives a single surface energy value for us. So, so if we inject a very small surface coverage, we can determine the surface energy at a very small concentration, also called infinite dilution. Increasing the concentration of the alkanes, but still being in the concentration range, whereas the solute uh, concentration is very low, reflecting the solid and sol solute uh, interactions. So if we increase the concentration, but still being in this uh, concentration range, whereas only solute 
solute interactions appear. We can determine the surface energy profile. And from the surface energy profile, we can get the surface energy distribution graph. So we can determine how heterogeneous is the surface energetically. Because real material surface are often heterogeneous uh, due to the surface defects or some impurities on the surface. Injecting only a single probe at different concentration, the adsorption isotherm can be determined. And from the adsorption isotherm, the BET specific surface area or the adsorption capacity or Henry's adsorption constant can be also determined. This slide lists the most commonly measured properties of composite compounds using IDC. So, for example, surface and acid base properties are often determined for composites because a high surface energy means a more reactive surface, which has important implications in processes involving interfacial interaction, as happens in wetting, coating, mixing, compaction, cohesion, and adhesion. And also, surface energy can be related to surface adhesion enhancing treatments and adhesion with other substrates. BET specific surface area is also often measured uh, with IGC on composite compounds, especially on fibers and fillers. And fiber matrix and filler matrix specific interaction parameter is also uh, a property uh, what you can determine with IGC. And it's determined from the acid and base constants of the individual components. And this specific interaction parameter uh, has a linear relationship with the interfacial shear resistance. And it's also used to rationalize the acid base forces at pigment resin interfaces. Once we know the surface energy of the individual components, the thermodynamic work of adhesion and cohesion can be calculated. So if we have two uh, components, component one and component two, and we measure the surface energy um, uh, components, the dispersive and the acid and base uh, component, we can determine the work of adhesion uh, between those components, and also we can determine the work of cohesion of the uh, particles, the individual particles. Cohesive energy uh, will um, correlate with the aggregation affinity um, of the particles, so aggregation in sample. The first case study um, is on composites, and it was a collaboration with NIST. Quality and performance of nanocomposite depend strongly on the interaction of the components at their interface. To enhance the adhesion properties at the interface, nanomaterials are often exposed to various surface functionalization processes. Two different types of nanomaterial, carbon nanotubes, and nanoclay uh, was investigated in this study. The carbon nanotube was oxidized to create uh, functional groups and to activate the surface, whereas the nanoclay uh, was passivated uh, with the surface treatment uh, which was applied on it. We are looking at two different materials and two different surface treatments and uh, investigated the effect of these surface treatments on the surface properties. The total surface energy of the nanomaterials and the polyurethane is presented on this slide. 
Uh, clearly, the surface treatment had significant effect on the surface energy of these uh, materials. You can see that the SVC of nanoclay has a really high surface energy. After the treatment, the treated nanoclay has a significantly lower, smaller surface energy. Opposite trend can be observed on the carbon nanotube samples. The oxidation, um, this surface treatment increased the surface energy of the carbon nanotube. With higher surface energy of the oxidized carbon nanotube and the S received nanoclay, the greater the cohesive forces between particles. Very strong particle particle interactions. Uh, leads to poor dispersion. So once we have the surface energy components of the individual uh, materials, we can calculate the cohesion and adhesion. And adhesion energy between polyurethane and each fillers uh, were calculated and also the cohesive energy. And from these two energies, the ratio is also determined. Ideally higher this ratio or closer to one is better and means a good adhesion and uh, a good uh, performance, good composite performance. In case of, uh, in case of carbon nanotube, uh, the S received showed better ratio than the oxidized uh, carbon nanotube. And in case of the nanoclay, we can select uh, the functionalized nanoclay, which shows better uh, ratio. Using surface energy, these two fillers can be selected as a promising reinforcement material for polyurethane matrix. Our collaborator, NIST, um, they actually made the composites and tested the mechanical properties of the actual uh, samples. And uh, two composite, composites showed improved mechanical properties. The same two uh, composites, whereas the adhesion and cohesion ratio uh, was better. So using surface energy and ad adhesion in the early stage of development, the most promising fillers or fibers can be selected for uh, the polymer matrix. In the next case study, uh, which was also a collaboration with Deakin University, and uh, this was on a ultrafine silk particles. Silk has a long history and recently its application is expanded. Some examples like uh, filler in synthetic fibers and polymeric products, um, biomedical applications also uh, recently quite popular, uh, filler in composite scaffold. Using silk powder improves moisture management, handling and dyeing and and functional properties in such products and its lightweight. Processing and application of silk requires a good understanding of their bulk properties, such as cohesiveness, flowability, spreadability, aggregation, and dispersion. In this study, we used airy silk, which is not that popular in textile industry. However, the host plant is available in wide climate conditions and it's more disease resistant. So we investigated um, three uh, cell powders and the fiber. The sample labeled with F was a decum fiber. Uh, AM sample was decumbed, cutted, milled, and spray dried to get powder form. 
And then we use this AM powder and applied air jet milling on this, and we had this AM AJM sample. And the last sample, the IGAM, was a little bit different than the AM sample. In this case, intensive decoming was applied and only three hours milling. On this slide, you can see some images and the BET specific surface area values measured uh, with using IGC SCA and also the average particle size um, from laser diffraction uh, results. So you can see that the AM tilt powder has a five micron uh, average particle size. The calculated surface area of a solid uh, five micron sphere should be about one meter square per gram surface area. So you can see that measured the experimental surface area is much higher. It's 18.57 meters square per gram. It's very close to the value what we measured also, what we measured with the nitrogen absorption technique. So this uh, sample uh, surface area was also determined with the nitrogen absorption method and the results with IGC and nitrogen absorption technique were in a really good agreement. Um, the much higher experimental BET surface area of this AM sample indicates that the particles are not solid sphere, but their morphology is distinctly different. So what we clearly uh, could see on the image of the AM uh, sample uh, particles the AM particle surface have a, like a cauliflower-like granular morphology. The air jet milling, so the same AM sample, but applying air jet milling on it. So the air jet milling says sharply reduced the average particle size. So from five micron to 700 uh, nanometer. But you can see that there's no significant increases in the, in the surface area. It was assumed that there was fragmentation of the particles during air jet milling. Size reduction was achieved mostly due to the deaggregation of primary particles from AM particle aggregates. And then the last sample, IGAM, the surface area of this sample is significantly different than the AM particles, despite having the same average particle diameter. A much lower surface area is the result of the different particle morphology. It, it doesn't have granulated surface face and porous architecture like the AM sample. The silk powder, on this slide you can see the surf surface energy uh, results of the silk powders and the fiber. The fiber is the F and the others, the colored uh, lines and dots, presents the different uh, silk powders. What we can observe that the silk powder has higher surface energy than the fiber, the silk fiber. Results of this study confirm that chemical processing altered the surface energy of silk powders. And also we can observe that the air jet milled silk powder shows higher surface energy, total surface energy, due to its higher specific surface energy. Higher surface energy also means higher cohesive energy as well. So the particle-particle interactions 
is quite strong in case of the edge at mill tail powder. The cohesion and flow function uh, results determined from the share test show the same trend. Edge at mill silk powder is highly cohesive and less flower glue. Based on the flow function number, the air jet milled powder is also considered as a very cohesive powder. In the final conclusion, um, we can say that surface energy could be correlated with the cohesiveness and the flow behaviors of silk powders. In the next case study, uh, we investigated uh, carbon fibers. The aim of this study was to determine the effect of surface treatments on surface properties of fibers and on adhesion with the polymers. Three different carbon fibers um, and three different polymers were investigated. Uh, the difference between carbon fibers was that the, the sample label with CA was an unsized and unoxidized sample. Um, and we had also an oxidized carbon fiber and finally an oxidized and sized carbon fiber. The surface energy uh, of these samples presented on this slide the dispersive part of the surface energy. You can see that the oxidized carbon fiber has significantly uh, higher surface energy than all the other samples, which means it's a really active uh, sample. The surface is very active. And also what you can see that the sized carbon fiber has a significant lower surface energy, even lower surface energy than the, the untreated carbon fiber. The reason is that um, the formation of the, uh, this epoxy layer uh, resulted a less active surface. The surface treatment also changed the acid and the base properties of the carbon fibers, while the surface of the untreated carbon fiber is more basic in nature. The oxidized and then the sized carbon fiber shows more acidic surface in nature. Different acid base properties affects the fiber matrix interaction strength which was supported by the adhesion and the interfacial shear test results. And you can see on this graph, the adhesive energy and the interfacial shear test, shear test, uh, test results. The oxidized carbon fiber uh, with all the three polymers, has higher adhesion and interfacial shear stress values. So the both properties, the adhesion and the interfacial shear stress, increased compared with the untreated structure. Sizing uh, did not really increase the mechanical performance despite the higher adhesive energy. What we for these composites. The interfacial shear stress obtained oh, yeah. carried out mm. and in the final conclusion um, we can tell that the surface treatment affects surface properties of the different uh, reinforcement materials. And the surface properties affect the adhesion between the matrix and the reinforcement material. The end properties of the composite part depend on the matrix 
reinforcement material and their starting forms. IGC is the most suitable technique for fibrosis and powdery substrates and to characterize the surface composite components because it doesn't suffer from those limitations like other surface characterization techniques. And it's a quick, accurate, versatile technique and a, a very user-friendly uh, to characterize different kind of solid materials. And finally, I would like to recommend um, the Handbook of Adhesive Technology, especially the Chapter 5, which uh, uh, describes the acid-base interactions um, in composites and um, the adhesion, the importance of adhesion. There's also um, some publications on uh, IGC SEA using um, uh, cellulose on cellulose and uh, polymer uh, composites. And uh, there's also some other publications on um, cellulosic fiber, surface energy, and surface area. So thank you for your attention and a special thank to our collaborators. And I'm ready to answer your questions. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Annette. If you have any questions, just uh, just let us know. You can put it in the chat box or uh, you can um, ask Annette directly. Yes, I, I have a question. So in terms of the uh, analysis, what is the temperature limitation of the system? Uh, the standard oven has a 20 to 150 degrees C operating range. However, we have a high temperature oven uh, up to 500 degrees C. Um, it, it's just um, under development. So the first prototype uh, has been shipped to a customer a year ago, um, but uh, we are ready now to produce this instrument. So basically it's uh, choosable that uh, do I want it with a standard or with a high temp column oven? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Most of our customers are in pharmaceutical industry and they they interested in a lower temperature range. So for them, the standard oven is more suitable and it's um, higher temperature is not really necessary. And we have this high temperature oven, which is from 30 degrees C up to 500. So the temperature range is quite wide. Um, however, there's only just uh, one column position due to the bigger insulation but the instrument uh, required in, in the oven uh, we had to implement a bit the uh, wider insulation um, due to the temperature the high temperature okay thank you you're welcome thank, thank, thank you joseph um thank you annette so there's a, a question here from simon annette how does absorbed species um affect your surface energy measurements this could be example um, water absorbed from the atmosphere. This absorbed species can be displaced later by your polymer matrix. I mean, absorbed species, um, so impurities on the surface uh, can affect the surface energy. And um, in that case, the, the surface energy, the heterogeneity, uh, will be wider. Water, absorbed water molecules, of course, also affects the surface energy because at a certain relative humidity, some water can absorb on the surface. But um, in our system, there's an option to condition the sample at high temperature. So before an experiment, you can completely dry out the sample, uh, remove um, any uh, absorbed uh, gases or water from the surface. When analyzing a polymer, what operating temperature would you choose uh, with regards to the polymer's glass transition temperature? It's a good question. It depends on um, the parameter, what you'd like to, to measure. In case of surface energy, I think um, any temperature which you'd like to measure the surface energy. Or, for example, if you'd like to know the, uh, the surface energy close to the, well, to the polymer, the Tg temperature is recommended. 
but you can measure at lower temperature or at higher. There's a nice study which shows that there's not too big changes in surface energy uh, in case of polymers uh, along the temperature range. Close to the TG in case of polymers, that will give you the best uh, the value, uh, which is much closer to surface energy when you apply the polymer and, uh, and the filler when you mix them together. Um, okay, I, I think that's about it. If you have other questions, you can email us science at surface measurement systems dot com, or if you want to know more about. IGCSEA, you can also visit our website or our YouTube channels where we have videos about IGC and join us again in the next uh, webinars. So um, thank you very much, Annette. Thank you also for your participations. Take care. Bye.